Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert. And today we're going to be analyzing more behavior and body language from Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you probably already know that both of them have been charged with felony child abuse. What we're going to be looking at today are numerous videos from the connections classroom, including ones on love and pain. Before we get started, a couple of quick things. Wanted to remind you that this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. I'm just providing my opinions based on publicly available information. In addition to that, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. We're going to start today by watching their video on pain. Let's just jump right in. So what is pain? Is it bad? Is it wrong? Is it something to be avoided? Uh, no. Pain is an opportunity for growth. It is a place where you can gain wisdom mm -hmm. about your experience and it is an opportunity to grow. So essentially they're describing pain as a positive thing. I want you to keep that in mind as we continue to watch this because you really have to be able to watch a lot of this in context to be able to make sense of how they see it and how they use it. Like have you ever heard like in the gym, no pain, no gain. That's what pain is for. It's an opportunity to develop, to stretch, to motivate yourself, now, in terms of the body language right here, one thing that I've seen is that Ruby Frankie doesn't seem to be as excited by pain as Jody Hildebrandt does. And so oftentimes when she talks about pain, she does this. Watch this right here. Uh, no. Pain is an opportunity for growth. It is a place where you can gain wisdom. So see, now she's looking intensely at Ruby saying it's a place that you can gain wisdom. The way that it seems here is that she is talking to Ruby. It's almost like in my opinion, sort of keeping her in line about these things, saying pain is used this way and this way and this way. I think the dynamic between them is that Jody is the teacher, Ruby is a student, and Ruby is the one who continues to learn and grow based on what she's learning from Jody. So that's oftentimes how she takes this information. And Jody, I think, sometimes wants to keep her in line to make sure she's listening. Like, have you ever heard, like, in the gym, no pain, no gain? That's what pain is for. It's an opportunity to develop, to stretch. It, she raised her eyebrows to stretch, to motivate. She really is into this idea of pain. Motivate yourself to practice using your agency inside truth rather than distortion. So the reality about pain is it's necessary. It is a gift. Mm. Pain is a gift. Gift. So here they are using the term gift again. They use this same term in the last video that I made because I explored when they were talking about their children not eating. Basically, Ruby had basically said that if somebody goes to bed late and they don't eat breakfast and then they don't eat lunch, that what a gift it is for them to learn responsibility through the suffering of not eating. And so this, once again, this idea that pain, suffering, all of these things are a gift for their children, it's wild. But let's hear her say that again is it's necessary. It is a gift. Mm. Pain is a gift? Gift? Pain is a gift. It is? Yes. <laughs> now that is a real smile. She seems to have real joy thinking about this. And also is one of the things that they do in a lot of their videos is to tell you to go against your instincts. As she's impersonating right here, somebody reacting, pain's a gift? Yes, it is. And she just seems to make her exuberant. She just seems to love this so much. So for me, because I've learned how to manage myself and put my pain on like a, a, a spectrum of, okay. This so she used air quotes to describe pain as though it's not a real thing. It's very interesting that she can trivialize pain despite the fact she's complaining about a headache essentially, but doing that probably makes her say, well, now we can cause other people pain because I can tolerate it and because that's the right way to be or the way to be in truth or whatever nonsense words they're using. Invite my body and my spirit to manage discomfort because discomfort is a part of life. It, and so that's part of the wisdom of experiencing pain is learning to manage it. And you don't call it bad. So the whole time I've been sitting here with a headache. So you're not allowed to call pain bad. It's a really fascinating concept that you can't say having a headache is bad. I am in pain. That is bad. But if you live by that rule, then if kids complain about pain, you tell them no pain is bad. If you are in pain or if you complain about something, then that is a distorted way of thinking. I know that's not how they phrase it. I just can't use it <laughs> the way they do. That's a distorted way of thinking and that you're not living in truth or whatever it is. So this is a, a manipulative tactic to talk about things in this way. And I'm just being responsible 
for the discomfort. And I'm not calling it, this is bad, or this is wrong, or this shouldn't be happening. This is an opportunity for me to practice being humble, both in spirit, both in emotion, and both physically. Well, I, I would say you have been graceful. You haven't been complaining. You've heard grace, grace under fire, grace under... You see, once again, he, she said, you haven't been complaining. That excites her. The idea of people shouldn't complain. People should never tell you when they're uncomfortable. People shouldn't tell you when something doesn't feel good. Watch her face again when, when Ruby says this. Well, I, I would say you have been graceful. You haven't been complaining. You've heard grace. So see the eyebrows go up. It brings emphasis to her face. She's smiling. See, I haven't been complaining. Look how great that is. And say to yourself, this isn't bad. Regardless of what presents, pain is not bad or wrong. It's an opportunity to um, develop. Think about the fact that this is a group for moms. And so they're talking about this in the context of parenting oftentimes. I really want you to keep in mind the context that they're trying to give these lessons under. Now we're going to watch some of their video on love. <laughs> you might leave this video going, oh, what I always thought was not love is actually loving. And what is loving is not what I thought it was. Whenever they say things like this, you know that they're going to say something that I probably am going to perceive as dangerous. But let's keep going. Follow us through all of the examples. They may trigger you and say, that's not, that's not true. I, I'm loving when I do that. And what you have to do is look at your motive, because we're going to give you examples of people who have motives that are in distortion, though they claim that they're in truth, though they claim they're in love. Yeah. So this is sort of a brainwashing effort, basically saying left is right, up is down. What you think is love isn't love. And we're going to explain why. Let's just keep watching and see where this goes. So as you listen, are you willing to put aside your feelings? Are you willing to put aside the chemical hit or all of the hormones that are going through your body in what you would call a loving situation and really assess, is what I think love and truth or is what I think love is in distortion? Yeah, exactly. And that's really challenging because um, I just saw a commercial, somebody showed me a commercial about a little girl who was playing in the back of the car with a a toy, like an electronic toy. Like and on it, an okay. iPad or something. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard Jody say that anger is her favorite emotion. And I don't think that she liked being interrupted by Ruby right here. Watch this. Toy. Like and on it, an okay. iPad or something. You saw her blink a lot, and now she's giving her a curt, mm -hmm. It's interesting that there's this passive aggressive hum underneath. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show this one more time because, frankly, I just like watching them not get along. Somebody showed me a commercial about a little girl who was playing in the back of the car with a, a toy, like an electronic toy. Like and on an iPad or something. Mm -hmm. And it took batteries. And then you have more control over your daughter. So power and control equals love. Love. Quote love. Love. If you can control your daughter not to scream, if you can control her to do what you want her to do, well, now you're a loving parent. Right. And what you'd say is, I'm controlling her to be happy. What's wrong with to, that? Trying to her to be happy. I, I don't want her to not be happy. Mm -hmm. And so... So the concept of happiness, the idea of wanting your children to be happy, the idea that that seems wrong to Jody with the way that she's saying this. Once again, she's saying it in a loud, aggressive, and curt way. Listen to this one more time. Well, now you're a loving parent. Right. And what you'd say is I'm controlling her to be happy. What's wrong with that? Trying to be her to be happy. I, I don't want her to not be happy. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we're. Look at the disdain, the disgust when after she says this. Watch one last time on this part right here. Parent. Right. And what you'd say is I'm controlling her to be happy. What's wrong with that? Trying to be her to be happy. I, I don't want her to not be happy. That's a look of disgust. I've pointed that out before, but you look at the corners of the mouth going down. She's disgusted at someone who would say this. And so this is where we're encouraging you. And we're both parents. We understand children and children's happiness and how, you know, so many of us, um, our whole life's goal is to make our kids happy. And most of the time we're trying to make our kids happy. What we're actually. So what she's doing is talking about trying to make your kids happy as though it's an absurd idea, rolling her eyes saying in a way that's meant to look sort of ridiculous. Watch her say this again. Children's happiness and how, you know, so many of us, um, our whole life's goal is to make our kids happy. 
And most of the time we're trying to make our kids happy. What we're actually doing is being in distortion and inviting them into a controlling dynamic. Well, I know when I was greatly living in distortion, when I would say, I want my children to be happy, what I was really saying is, I want my children to not bug me. So this is interesting. So now we're getting an idea of the way that Ruby Frank thinks. To me, actually, I don't think of this as being how most parents think. So it's interesting to get some insight into how she assumes everybody else feels. I want my children to not interfere with my agenda. I don't want my children to interrupt. And it takes a real humble parent to admit to that and to see that and then to change. Yeah, exactly. And you see that look right on the edge of Ruby's mouth right there. That's what we typically associate with contempt. So her talking about this seems to actually bother her quite a lot. So we're inviting you to reconsider your definition of love and how you manifest love. Um, my daughter had a birthday the other day. And she was choosing to behave super selfish. And she and I were conversing. And I said, wow. And this was on her birthday. I said this. Wow. I am really sad. And it hurts my heart to watch you behave so selfishly. And Ruby. Look at the pride on Jody Hildebrandt's face that she would tell her daughter this on her birthday. I'm very curious what the behavior was that she thought was so selfish because she doesn't tell us what it is. But the idea that she confronted her daughter seems to be something that she gets great joy from. We'll watch that part and I'm going to let it keep going. And this was on her birthday. I said this. Wow, I am really sad and it hurts my heart to watch you behave so selfishly. And Ruby smiled like, wow, you said that on her birthday? And I said, yeah, I did. And she's like, good job. High five. <laughs> Look at the, once again, the joy that they get when they talk about the ways that they talk to children that are, would be upsetting that whether it's birthdays, Christmas, whatever special day it is. Yeah. You'd be willing to talk to your kid like that on their birthday. I mean, you're talking about high-fiving each other. Just look at the joy on their faces right now. Let's hear them say that again. And I'm going to let it keep going. So selfishly. And Ruby smiled like, wow, you said that on her birthday. And I said, yeah, I did. And she's like, good job. High five. <laughs> because I love my daughter. And so this dynamic between them, they're reinforcing the worst traits of each other. Yes, you should be confrontational with your daughter. Yeah, you should tell her that she's selfish on her birthday. The idea that they're supporting these behaviors from each other certainly isn't going to help. I love my daughter. And because I love my daughter, I am not interested in fulfilling some selfish agenda of me wanting to make sure that she, on her birthday, is not upset with me. I will always reflect truth to my child, always. So what she's saying is that based on what they've said so far, I interpret that as I don't care if my child is happy on her birthday or not. That's essentially what she's trying to say. Truth is always loving, and the world might look at you and say, wow, Jody, that wasn't very loving, especially on her birthday. I, I have an example of something really similar. Well, I want to share. I thought was loving. However, the fruits of what I was providing for my children, the love I was offering them was inviting them into destruction. So uh, for many years, I ran a YouTube channel called uh, Eight Passengers, and in in doing so, we found a lot of success. We were one of the very few. Now, as she's talking about her success, watch Jody's face. Not a, an ounce of joy, not a smile, nothing from her. But Jody does not seem to love hearing her talk about her eight passengers. Watch, just watch Jody while she talks about this. That was loving. However, the fruits of what I was providing for my children, the love I was offering them, was inviting them into destruction. So, while Ruby is talking, I want you to pay attention to Jody's breathing. She's breathing heavy and fast, which means her heart is pumping harder. Because when our heart pumps faster because of adrenaline, it uses up more oxygen. So we have to breathe faster and breathe harder. And I think that what Ruby is talking about really bothers her. Just watch Jody's breathing right here. Found a lot of success. We were one of the very few who made it big, and we had a lot of views, a lot of eyes on us. And as a result, companies would send us their products. We had every day our porch became a plethora of Santa Claus. Um, we had shoes sent to us. We had 
vacations given to us. We would travel the world for free. We were given, um, we'd go to the movies and people would recognize us and they'd give us free popcorn and Slurpees. We, um, we had free. Uh, see, your, see Jody shaking her head in disapproval. The whole idea of this is so frustrating to her. I presume, and this is just my guess, I'm not insisting this, I think it's very possible that Jody is quite jealous of the success that Ruby had. You name it, from clothes to toys to games to vacation. And now you can see, if you watch, look at Jody's brow, it's getting more and more angry as this goes on. To, um, you know, cars and like, you name it, it was just given to us. And I thought, wow. Look at what I'm providing for my children. I'm giving them something I never had as a kid. I'm providing them with so much. Isn't that love? And I thought for many years it was loving. Now, the fruits, the fruits of love. So when she lets go, when she gets excited, is once Ruby starts talking about the fact that it was bad, that you should reject it all, that it was not good. Just watch this. Isn't that love? And I thought for many years, it was loving. Now, the fruits, the fruits of love, again, are they bring creation. They invite a child to know who they are. And I saw the fruits and they weren't so fruitful. They were rotten. That The, the, the axiom, <laughs> they were spoiled rotten. My children were. All right. So now you see her laughing. Now she's calming down. Now she's feeling good again. When you hear Ruby saying that her kids were rotten, for the, to use her terminology, Jody's anger was soothed by her statement. Spoiled rotten. And, and it came out in their attitudes. It came out in, I'm bored. No kid had more toys or games at their feet than mine. And they were bored. <laughs> how, 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 Which means selfish, by the way. How is that even possible? Right. Pretty sure bored just means bored. But once again, every word has to have a second definition for these two. I knew it became a problem when there were boxes on the porch and nobody wanted to open them anymore because wow. they got bored with having packages come to the house. So I did what a true loving mom would do. And I. You see, once again, you see Jody shaking her head. This is something she disapproved. Because on the porch and nobody wanted to open them anymore because wow. they got bored with having packages come to the house. So. I did what a true loving mom would do. And I said, no more. I'm not going to do this anymore. Who says no to free packages, gifts, money, vacations? Someone who's truly loving. Yes. And I can. And there's the look again. Watch Ruby Frankie's mouth. This is a facial expression that we associate with contempt. Watch this right here. To free packages, gifts, money, vacations. Someone who's truly loving. Yes. So I'm not sure how much she really is glad that she's given up all this stuff. I guess you have to listen to what she says about it, but her face suggests that there's some degree of contempt about something. Is what I'm doing really, truly loving? Or is what I'm doing because I want something out of it? Yeah. And, and there were people, and I would say people who were close to you, that were inviting you very now, this is interesting. Watch Ruby Frankie's body right here when she says people that were close to you. She leans back. She did not like that. And and there were people, and I would say people who were close to you, that were... See, her body moved back. And we do that we, to try to create physical distance. They are oftentimes very close. They're practically touching half the time. And sometimes they do. They're just sitting right next to each other. So something about saying that really hit Ruby Frank the wrong way. Inviting you very strongly to go into that deception to deceive all of you and say, you know, we're sorry so that you could, is that yeah, true? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Now we're going to watch a clip on their video about sexuality. Feel released in their sexuality. And then we refuse to have them go out and work. If, <laughs> if you want your kid to truly engage in his or her sexuality, give them a broom, give them a shovel, <laughs> send them outside, put some work gloves on them, get them sweating. So once again, they have this hypersexual focus on everything that is not sexual. And that's actually not what we're focusing on now. I just had to show that part to the lead up, the part that's next, because this is far more interesting. Quality. Don't give them work. Let them get some blisters on their hands. We have an ongoing disagreement about work. 
So they have an ongoing disagreement here. So this means that they are talking about the kids wearing work gloves. So you have Jody here who's apparently against work gloves. And it seems like Ruby is trying to suggest that kids should wear work gloves. Work gloves. <laughs> it's her perception. <laughs> you could have work gloves if you want. <laughs> she thinks that's for wimps. <laughs> I like Let's work my gloves. Calloused hands. <laughs> She's so look at this dynamic between them. So it goes to show that Jody has a very specific way of seeing things, a very specific agenda. And it seems like Ruby struggles with that a little bit. Let's watch that whole interaction again, and then we'll talk about it. Give them a broom. Give them a shovel. <laughs> send them outside. Put some work gloves on them. Get them sweating. That will help them engage Don't in their sexuality. Don't give them work. Let them get some blisters on their hands. We have an ongoing disagreement about work gloves. Look at the intensity of Jody's laugh. It's really remarkable. And then Ruby is looking for acceptance, looking to make sure she's saying the right thing. Jody's not even looking at her. She's just so deeply into this right now. It's her perception. You could have work gloves if you want. She thinks that's for wimps. I, I like I work my gloves. Calloused hands. What an absolutely weird interaction it's just so strange but it also shows that dynamic the conflict that's there that they do have conflict about how they should manage things it sounds like that jody goes a lot farther than ruby probably would on her own so now we're going to see ruby frank talking about reality truth doesn't need backing up you know what does need backing up distortion because it's not reality. And so anyone who comes and says, where's your proof? That person is in distortion. So anytime you're asking someone for proof of something they said or did or whatever, they're telling them that that is a distorted way of looking at it. Because they're trying to control. They're saying, I'm not going to believe you until I see proof. So you're not allowed to ask for proof to believe someone. That's, that, that is a scary thing to say. And it's like, well... You don't believe in reality? You need proof that reality exists? That's distorted. Truth is love. Truth creates. Truth gives inspiration. Distortion deceives. I, I know I said this on the last video, but the things that Ruby Frank says are just ravings like this doesn't this doesn't make any sense. I really genuinely like if you really pay attention to everything that was just said it really doesn't make any sense. Distortion destroys. And I don't care how big the crowd is. Crowds cannot say what is wrong, what truth has proclaimed to be right. Now we're going to listen to Jody talk about children acting out. They're acting out with behaviors, video games, or they may act out with lust. They may act out with drugs or food or. There's the food again. That's a consistent theme through so many videos. Or, or aggression, or um, some kids act out with like reading books, like they hide behind books. So now we've got drugs, food, aggression, and books. So the idea that you can interpret children reading books as them acting out. So what this is doing is this is putting the parent in absolute control that anything and everything can be defined as acting out, much like anything and everything can be defined as sexual if you watch their video on things that are sexual. Some kids want to, you know, hang with their friends all the time. They don't want to come home, so they distract themselves with their friends. There are all these different behaviors that kids and adults go into to distract themselves from the fear that they don't matter. And usually they don't even know that they have the fear because they're afraid to even look that way and no one usually even helps. So the fear of not being loved is making children read. Like the, the, the logic here, once again, the whole purpose of this seems to be to give as much control to the adult as humanly possible. Now we're gonna watch a little bit of the intro video to Moms of Truth, which eventually became Connections. Behaviors and they don't have truth because you can't be doing that and live in truth. You cannot do that and live in truth. So I am not interested in getting into a tug of war around political issues. I am not interested. And what I am interested in 
is you. I am interested in you. So to me, this sounds like a fake voice quivering to make people affected and to feel connected. This is something we've seen somewhere else, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But Jody Hildebrandt right here is making her voice quiver. Maybe it's possible that she really is that moved at the idea of helping people. But oftentimes when I've seen people do this, particularly in int introduction videos and that sort of thing, it's a way to draw people in. Just like when we smile, we hope other people reflect that smile. The idea of tearing up and creating an emotional moment that is not real is another way to connect with people. Let's watch this again. I'd be curious to, to hear what you think, to see if you think that this is real or, or not into a tug of war around political issues. I am not interested. And what I am interested in is you. I am interested in you. I love you as a sister. I'm not trying to make a joke here. This was my genuine first reaction. Just watch this cult leader talk for a second. This is as scientific, this is as true as true could be, but you have to know me. You have to trust me. You have to believe me. Some can know me now. Some can even know me for the first time when they see this tape. It's the same sort of voice quivering to connect with the people that they're talking to. Now, obviously, there are sometimes people that are talking that genuinely get choked up. It's not like nobody ever actually feels that level of emotion but it certainly didn't seem real when Jody was doing it, and it definitely isn't real when Doe from Heaven's Gate is doing it. Point being is that there's something about the performance of this. There's something about the idea that it feels manipulative. So that pretty much wraps it up for today. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of some of the weirder behavior and body language that we've seen from Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie. If you all are interested, I can keep analyzing this stuff because they have a lot of videos. Otherwise, if you have any other ideas, please let me know in the comments below. And before we wrap things up, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right. Thanks for watching.